Hey guys, welcome back in another episode of Investing in Huntsville. Investing in Huntsville. We need a jingle. Maybe we maybe did. you could just do that. I don't have a jingle. <laughs> I'm not a very jingly creator. It sounded a lot like a jingle. So uh, <laughs> anyway, hey, uh, welcome back in. This is the uh, 30 minute or more or less show where we talk about uh, investing in uh, real estate in general, in Huntsville in particular. But as we always say, the things we talk about here are universal. So The principles work over all markets. Yeah, you may have to just adjust them according to your That's right. Market. You so, do. You yeah. Do. So how, how was your week? How you been? Oh, man, I've been super busy. Had to jump on a flight, go to Tampa, hung out there for a few days, came back, had some closings yesterday, here today, got to leave here, go some more closings. Busy. The life of a real estate mogul. Renegotiated my big commercial building. Oh, did you? What's going I on? did. We, we need to talk about that, Neil, a little more in depth. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, so this is the one, the big, uh, what, the, how big is this thing? It's uh, over 8,000 square feet. Wow. You renegotiated it. Uh, yeah. You must have gotten some inspections done. I did. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah well, we, I, I want to I hear that story. But uh, uh, how about today we talk about uh, those few times in our lives when things have not gone as planned. Ooh, what do you think? The, so, the, the good, the bad, and the And ugly. the really ugly. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, every investor... Uh, you know, we have those deals. Not every deal goes great. There's always yeah. like inspections pop up. Yeah, yeah. Numbers don't work out. Yeah. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. You know, sure. the bane of my existence apparently lately are the permit folks. But, yeah. you know, it is what it is. So, uh, well, yeah, give like, me your thoughts. Well, and here's the thing. Like in real estate, we're always wishing for the best, right? Mm-hmm. We wish for the best. We prepare for the worst. That's my theology right. behind it. Um, and sometimes... It's not always ugly. It's just bad, right? right? And so sometimes the bad is like, oh, we get hung up with inspectors or, yeah. oh, we had to fire a couple of contractors. And and so the bad sometimes slows us down, but we can move forward. But the ugly <laughs> is when we lose money. Yeah. Right. Not, not everyone is, and, is um, great. Yeah. I've been fortunate that I've had quite a few bads, but I had one real ugly one in the beginning of my journey. Well, let's, let's talk about that because I think a lot of investors go in with these rose colored glasses is thinking it's going to be easy. Yeah. And the reason they think it's going to be easy is because guys like you make it look easy, but yeah. they don't realize what's going on behind those sport yeah. glasses. You well, wear. and I was one of those mm-hmm. on that deal. I yeah. thought it was, you know, the TV shows, the people were like, oh, go make a bunch of money. Flipping Carlton houses. Sheets never yeah. mentions the bad stuff. No. And yeah. um, so I got all excited. I was 24 years old back then. Um, so we're talking the beginning of my journey. Mm-hmm. And I was wholesaling. Um, but I wanted to make some big money and, um, this deal came across and the potential of this deal was 200,000 in profits. Wow. Now this was when I was starting my journey out in California. It was in a little place right North of Oakland and right South of what they call the, um, Carquina straight below single Blake. family. It was a single family. <clears throat> okay. Um, the front looked like one story, but the back <clears throat> was two stories because it dropped down and went into a little Valley. It was a nice little house, but I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, I just, all I saw was that there was a potential to make 200,000. <laughs> and I'll never forget, there was a guy at the local investor club. His name was Joe Nunes. And um, he, I was telling him about the deal. And he said, oh man, he's like, you know, this this is going to be a big job for you. I mean, you know, I was like, yeah, the contractor told me it was going to take $100,000. And he was like, no way. He's like, this, you're, this is going to be a lot more than a hundred. I'm like, no, no, the contractor yeah. told me a hundred grand. <laughs> and I'll never forget. He looked me in the face and he said, he said, look, you need help on this. You've never done anything like this. Don't do this by yourself. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, I got an agent. I got a contract. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And um, he said, look, I'll tell you what, I will come in and help you on this deal. I'll help manage it. I'll help, you know, manage the budget, the project, everything through this journey. He said, I just want you to do a 50-50 split with me at the end. Well, my little pea brain <laughs> was like, thought what? he's trying to hoard it on your I deal. Did. Yeah. I was like, there's no <laughs> way I'm giving this guy a hundred grand of my deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I um, proudly said no. And um, uh, by far, it was one of the worst mistakes I ever made in my yeah. life. Yeah. Um, so, so let's let's kind of just dissect up to that point because yep. you you were new at this, very new. You, you know, you'd read some books, you'd yep. watch some tapes, yep. you found a deal, uh, you you 
probably didn't even think too much about what it was going to take to get it done. You just saw the the number at the end, yeah. As they said, because I walked it with a contractor and he said a hundred grand. Yeah, I was like, oh, I plugged it into my. So sheet. he he was suddenly your expert. He knew he, what he was it, talking about. There you go. Yeah, he was the expert that I somehow convinced myself that he wasn't lying to me. Right. And so <laughs> you you took his word over a seasoned investor I who did. knew. And that, and that guy knew what was going to go on. Oh, he so, knew. I mean, the guy had been, I mean, he was doing something like, I want to say around 10, 12 deals a month. Yeah. You know, like yeah. he was the real deal. And yet here he was trying to horn in on your deal. Yeah. How yeah. dare he? How dare he? So how'd it go? It went horrible. <laughs> um, so was I, he right about everything? Oh, he was yeah. 100% right. Yeah. Um, uh, now, the irony is, it, fast forward, he ended up becoming my coach. Oh, that's well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and I did just shy of a million dollars with him in that 12 months I worked with him. So mm -hmm. he was a, it was a sharp, sharp, sharp guy. Yeah. But, um, but on that deal, um, you know, I was all in this mindset. I'm just going to be the business guy. I'm not going to be the contractor right. be on the job. So I'm going to focus on these things. So I let the contractor run the job. And I was talking to the agent. And the agent was like, yeah, we're, we're getting close. We're getting close. Well, I was not going and doing walk-ins. I was not going and doing inspections. I was not going by. They would say, hey, we need a check. I'd send a check. Hey, we need a check. Yeah. I'd send a check. Well, next thing you know, I realized I'd paid out like 98000 or something. And uh, the contractor's like, hey, we're going to need another 100000 <laughs> And I was like, what? Yeah. Like, what are you, what are you talking? I've got your bid. It, it was 100000 to do the whole thing. He's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you might want to come look at the property. Wow. And I'll never forget, that was a gut-wrenching moment, right? Yeah. And especially when you're 24 years old, you'd left your job. I didn't even have insurance. And yeah, and you didn't have another $100,000 in your back pocket. Because that was the money I had saved up from wholesaling real estate. Yeah. And, um, and I had went and borrowed private money to help me buy this house, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember I drove out to that property, and when I walked in, Tim, you could see straight through the house. It was still gutted. <laughs> wow. It was still gutted. What had they spent all the money on? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I was. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. So right. let's stop and dissect up to there. Yeah. Basically, again, you put your trust in folks who you thought were experts. Yeah, they were the experts. Yeah. You didn't check on them. You didn't monitor the job. I'm sure now you know every oh. time a nail is driven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every, Zach can hear a screw being turned right now. <laughs> that cost me money. Pick that yeah, up. Pick that up. So, <laughs> but but that was the number one you trusted people that yeah. really it wasn't their money. They had no vested interest that the job got done. Right. Yep. And so, I mean, how big of a turd did you lay when you, when you walked through this house and saw what so was So it gets worse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me while I laugh at your pain. <laughs> uh, look, you know what, though, Tim? I laugh, too, because here's what I'm going to tell you. That was probably the greatest learning lesson an education. of yeah. my life in so many levels of who I was as a person, mm -hmm. my character, my my tenacity to get back up and keep going. Mm -hmm. Because when I walked into that house and I saw what I saw, I went home and hid. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't even have the money to finish it out. Like, right. what am I going to do? Like, everybody ghosted me at that point. Uh, I had lent my private lender calling for payment. And I was just, I almost had like this self, uh, I put this on myself. Like, I had so much stress. It was like I had the flu. Yeah. I didn't even want to get out of the bed. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, my partner at the time in life, she came in there and she said, look, I'm going to tell you right now, Zachary, that's what, you know. It's like when your mom calls yeah. you. <laughs> She's like, yeah. you either get up and fix this problem or you go get a job. Mm -hmm. And that scared me to death. I did not want to get a job. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so uh, after a couple of months, I got up and I realized I couldn't complete the job. Yeah. Um, I called the private investor and was just like, I messed up. Like I messed up, man. And I've got this house. I've put a hundred grand into it. Needs another hundred grand to finish out. Mm. And that private investor said, "Well, don't be telling me that you don't want to finish this agreement out." And I said, "I don't have the resources yeah, to do." You couldn't. It. Really. I couldn't. Yeah. I said, and I, um, I don't want to make this difficult on you. There's no reason to foreclose on me. I'm trying to tell you now. And he said, "Meet me at the attorney's office in an hour to sign a deed in lieu of foreclosure." So he was taking it over. He took it over. 100% he took it over. And so needless to say, I always say I lost 300 grand on that deal because I lost 100,000 of my own money and the 200,000 of potential profits. Right. And that was a hard blow for me because I didn't, at that point when, when that big of a hit hit me, I really didn't know 
if real estate was the path for me, mm-hmm. you know, cause your self-esteem gets Yeah, You got to start questioning yourself. You do. Yeah. And, um, and I spent a little while spinning out of control because it was like, at that point, I almost felt like I was self-sabotaging things mm-hmm. because I didn't want to get back in that. So I was so skittish to do anything. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, Oh, is, is it right? Is it right? But that was when I ended up going back to the original investor and I said, look, Joe, you were right. You were right about everything. Yeah. I was like, you know, you're, you're absolutely. And he was like, Zach, if I had a dollar for every time I seen a new investor try to do what you did, he's like, I wouldn't invest anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, can I work with you? And that's when I ended up yeah. hiring Joe. And um, it was the best thing I ever did. So you, do you think a lot of it was, and I don't, I don't mean this bad, but just ignorance. Oh, 100%. And, and blind trust Well, it was others. ignorance, ego. <clears throat> it was all yeah. of that. Let's you know talk about I mean? some ego here. Yeah. Because that, I mean, that's so. the number, especially if you're a guy. Yeah. We all have our, our big egos. Yeah. Some are bigger than others. Well, and I did have an ego back yeah. then, and that put me in check because I it was like, I was this young 24 year old kid that was just, <clears throat> man, we were wholesaling like a mad machine. And that was like, mm-hmm. you know, it was like my chest was out. Like, yeah. we're the golden child in this market. <laughs> Look at what we can do. Like, right. bam, bam. I yeah. mean, I had people on phones in the office, and the buzz and the thrive was just going. And, and I was like, I'm going to the next level. I'm going to start rehabbing and making big money now. And I wasn't ready. I wasn't yeah. prepared. I did not do my foundation. I did not have the right team. I did not have the things in place that I needed. I did not have a clue of what I was walking into. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, I did not have the right support coach or mentor that could help me in that journey, even right. though it was right in front of my face. But I could not get my little pea brain around the idea of paying someone a hundred thousand for their consulting yeah, of course like it just I, I, it, I couldn't even fathom that someone's worth was that much now mm-hmm. today I've paid way more than that for consultants because mm-hmm. I get it now mm-hmm. you know we when we've never bought con- or paid for consulting or coaching and when that coach says hey I'm 50 grand or I'm 40 grand or I'm 20 grand mm-hmm. we're like what yeah <laughs> like, what <laughs> that's <clears throat> crazy mm-hmm. like why would mm-hmm. I pay that mm-hmm. you know yeah. so that's where I was yeah so so you, you learned your lessons very much. It was it was education money. Very That's what much. I call that is when very you much. when you learn. If you had not learned anything, it would have been wasted money. Yeah, but because you learned, yeah, it was education money or what Dave Ramsey calls stupid tax. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We've all you know, paid and it. I always make the statement like you're going to pay for your education one way or the other. Yeah. Do you see that happen with a lot of your students? I mean, they're very eager. They're ready to get started. They'll bring you deals thinking that they're the greatest things in sliced bread. And when you look at them, you oh, have to bring I, them back I down to earth. I tear them up. Yeah. Not the student, but the deal. Yeah. You know, my job on, is, you know, I work with a lot of deal partners. And so, you know, I'm in a lot of these deals with mm-hmm. them. And so when they bring it to me, I'm underwriting it like nobody's business because in some of them, I have my own money in these deals. Right. And, and so I'm trying to find every way that it can go wrong. <clears throat> yeah. Not where the student brings it in. They're only looking at how it could go right. Yeah. Well, then I get my hands on it and I'm going, well, how can it go wrong? How can it yeah. go wrong? And look, let's just be honest. I probably shoot holes in 80% of them. Yeah. You know, we, I turn 80% of them down and I'm like, look, you didn't see this, this, and this, and this. And let's just be honest, Tim, like that doesn't, being able to do that comes from years of experience and being in the market and understanding right. our area and the cost and ARVs yeah. and all of that. Well, so. the one thing I've noticed about a lot of new flippers, cause I, I just flip is they they really don't want to know what's behind the walls. They don't, they don't want to know what's in the attic. They, they don't. don't want to know what's it's under the like floor. It's like stick my head it's in like, a hole. I, right? I, I, have, I Honestly, you know, I've walked uh, these houses with, with flippers. And yep. not, not just newbies, but even some that have done a few deals. And I'm like, how's, how's the roof? I think it's good. Well, have you been under the house? No, but I think it's good. Yeah. You've been behind that wall? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's almost like a don't ask, don't tell scenario and they don't want to know what's back well, there they, but that's what'll bite them in the ass that's what i'm about to say like it's almost like they feel like oh well no one's going to catch it well look exactly. if you're renting the house no no one's going to catch it <clears throat> yeah. until eventually you go to sell it right, right? if you're flipping your buyer is going to put an inspection on the that inspector's property. going to find it yeah yeah and and i've i've seen that happen. we we had a deal here at revolve recently where like the day of closing the agent went out to do the final walkthrough, and there was like some black dust coming from under a cabinet. It was termite damage. Oh! And they were they were final walkthrough, yeah. and they had somehow missed that. 
And oh. so, you know, I mean, I, I don't crawl under houses. Yeah, I don't even. I'll go in an attic. If it's I'll big look enough around, to look in. But I rely heavily on my inspector. Bam, I, I take him it. at his word. That's it right there. And, yeah. I, and I preach this. I'm like, you need two inspections. You need the inspection before you buy it so you can tell what your contractor what the things right. to do besides your like, oh, this color, that color, these floors, right? Mm -hmm. It's the list that they need to be able to add to their bid. And then the second inspection that we do is known as a comeback inspection, which typically it's only about 75 to 100 bucks. Sure. But it's for that inspector to go and make sure your contractor did the things they were supposed yeah. to do before we give final check. That's another kicker in my business yeah. is we will, uh, I have seen deals where the inspector went out, did the inspection, Got the request for repairs, sent it to the seller. The seller sends, or the agent sends back all, all done, good to go. All right, I require receipts yeah. and I require photographs. Yes. And the reason yes. I do that, Zach, no, is I can't done. tell you how many times I have gotten the uh, all good, the clothes, inspection done, repairs done, and you walk through and like, oh, he must have missed that. Yeah. Or he must have missed that. Yeah. You know, and so I think well, the, let me, just the due diligence is important. Let me throw stuff. this in about okay. this deal in California. My first, my first rehab, and my first bad deal, right? <laughs> my right. ugly deal. Here's the irony to the whole thing. Mm. So one, Joe ended up being my coach eventually anyways. Mm -hmm. But two, that private investor ended up being a private investor to me down the road. Oh, wow. And, that, and, yeah. and let me explain. So when I gave him back that deal, he went on to make, you know, 200 plus thousand. He on finished that. the house oh, and he made money. Yeah. made a lot of money on it. Right. But about six, eight months later, I, you know, I was back in the game. I was just, I was refocused back in, like I'm going forward. Um, and I'll never forget, his name was Stan. And um, we ended up running into each other at a coffee shop in Vacaville, California. And I was like, Stan, he's like, Zach, hey, how are you? I'm like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm still doing my thing. I'm still, he's like, you rehabbing? I'm like, yeah, we are. And he's like, you lose any money? I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. I haven't. And he's yeah. like, well, let's talk. And I got on the mm -hmm. phone with him and I said to him, I said, why would you even consider loaning me money again? And you know what he said to me? Mm. He said, because out of all the people I've loaned money to that went south, you were the only one I didn't have to chase. Yeah. He Makes said, sense. you it called me, you owned up to it and you didn't fight it. Yeah. And that was when I said earlier, I learned a lot about myself, yeah. right, through that process. And it was even when things go bad, you still have to be true to who you are. Yeah. Because a lot of times <clears throat> investors, they don't, they would never do that because they're trying to figure out how not to lose the hundred grand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they'll fight it all the way to the end and it just makes it work. They're going to lose it anyway. Yeah. Right. And, and I was just willing to just cut ties and start over. Yeah. Well, I think number one, he's a smart guy. You know, these, these investors go by numbers. Yeah. Now, a few of them will get pissy and go by their gut. And, you know, yeah. you, you lose them money once they write you off, you're gone. Yeah. yeah. But if they look at the person yep. and they look at the character, and I know you do this. I do. As Anytime leader. somebody comes to ask you for money, you're, I know you look at the numbers. Of course. But I would bet money that a lot of your decision is based on the person. It is. Yeah. Like, I mean, it could be a great deal, but if I don't trust the person, I'm still not funding it. Right. I'm yeah. Doing it. And that's a, that's a big part of it. So, and you know, I think what you did. No, was, I don't tell them. <laughs> well, no, you call me up and go, let me tell you about this son bitch. <laughs> I don't be yeah. like, look, I didn't fund you because I don't like you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing about it is, and it's, it's not a likability factor in a lot of, like I've, I've talked to young, but just cocky. Yeah. You know, I, I got 401k. I've watched HGTV for three years. I know what I'm doing. Yep. I don't, I don't need a mentor. I don't need this. I, and, and they end up coming back just, you know, losing their shirt on some true. deals. But I think this business more than a lot show the true character of people. Especially in times of desperation. Yes. And I always say, look, money makes people do funny things. It sure does. And and that is the testament of a person's true character in that yeah. in that moment. Yeah. And and that is what I'm always looking for. Like even when I'm talking to people and building relationships, they might want to be borrowing money from me. I'll ask them. I'll be like, Hey, when's the last time you had challenging on a on a deal? Oh, it was this deal, this deal. I'm like, Great, well, how did that work? How'd how you did you handle it? that? Yeah. And I'm just reading, you know, how they respond. Do I feel like they're overflating it? Because that, to me, tells a lot about the person mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. So, And yep. I look, let's just be honest. Success is great. 
we love success, but we learn more through times of failure yeah. than we ever do in success. Yeah, there there are a lot more lessons in failure. A hundred percent. You know, because if yeah, honestly, if someone has success, success, they get complacent, they get cocky. That's right. That's what happened to me. Yeah, and yep. so yeah, um, so the moral of that story was. Uh, Listen to the experts. Know the numbers. <laughs> keep your keep your hand in. Keep, you yeah. know, go by and check on the yes. work. Every oh, there's now so and many then. lessons. Yeah, right? a lot of you'll write a book on that one. But we you know, just like with with me. I I've never lost money on a flip, but I've lost a lot of time, and a lot of it has yeah. to do with with trusting others to do what they're going to do. And anytime you work with contractors, for Pete's sake, you're you know, it's a crapshoot. Yeah, their their true. watches on a different time than mine every every time. But you know, we've had some issues with uh, with like some permits, mm -hmm. and basically we screwed up. We yeah. did not pull a permit, and we got caught. Yeah, fair and fair and square. You got us. You know, and, but and they came at you trying to make you like this little. Well, it was. I, you right? know, I don't want to go into the whole details, but basically what happened was, you know, we do a lot of video. Yeah. And so I do before and after of all of our flips yeah. and someone, I'm sure someone who doesn't like good old Tim, I'm sure. uh, called and reported me as be, for being a building without a license mm. when I wasn't, I'm, I'm the money guy. Yeah. I buy it. I've got someone who takes care of all the repairs and then I, I sell it. And there was just a snafu on permits. You're not building anything. I'm not yet. building anything. Yeah. And they, they came in and said, well, you're, you're the contractor. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And I, I clearly, I had to show that we've got three companies. My company buys it. Yeah. This company does the work. And then my other company sells it. Well, again, there was a snafu. And this company here in the middle to do the work didn't pull the permit. Yeah. And so I think they were trying to make a, an example of me. Because they're like, well, you're on YouTube bragging about not needing permits. And I said, you'll never hear the word permit come out of my mouth on YouTube until right. now. Right. You know, so that's complete. But anyway, we finally got it cleared up. But it yeah. took about two and a half months. And so we had three flips sitting on the ground with nothing being done. Mm, and, that's the worst too. yeah it, i would just it eats me oh. you know and i i'm just like oh just progress i just want to see something right. you know right. and i i went by every goddamn week yeah. you know it's i'm like, like oh, the door. This is killing Do me. and uh but yeah i mean and then it was it was a, a booger to figure out but we got it done and we learned our lesson and from now on if i breathe i get a permit yeah it's just what <laughs> i'm gonna I'm do it. well and, and the thing of it is, is that all started because somebody Wanted to throw shade or create yeah. issues in you know, the world. It, it, uh, since I got into real estate yep. on the retail side, real, it's, a, it's a cutthroat business. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. tell you, you know that. Oh, know. And not everybody who's in it is nice. Oh, yeah. And, and some folks are just us. petty. And I mean, Look, I might, four years ago, yeah. I had somebody run around town saying the FBI was after me. <laughs> I mean, <that's, laughs> like, that was four years ago. Yeah. And I'm like, and then you, it pops up every it, once in it, a while. Well, it does, you know. So, I mean, you know, you just kind of do things. I've honestly had agents do a deal with me and go, well, you're not an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. And I'm like, well, did you hear? I, well, you know, kind yeah. of the room. Yeah. And so there's always that. But you know, the good news with us is, you know, we, we weren't able to do anything on these flips, but it was in the downtime. So honestly, that three months that we're behind, we're probably going to end up more making more money because by the time they are done and on yeah. the market, the market's going to come back. Yeah. Well, that happened on Wax. I, I had that happen on, on Euclid, on a house yeah. on Euclid. The same same thing. I trusted my contractor. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I really wasn't up on what needed to be praised. My, I, I take responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, but that's the house, what we do. yeah, but the house got uh, got tagged, and so if we had finished the house on schedule, I think it would have sold for like one fifty. Well, we were two months behind. It sold for one eighty five. Yeah. So even though I had two extra months of carrying costs and that sort of thing, the market came back to the point where we made more money. But And that's a beautiful thing. That happened on um, uh, South Huntsville, the one you sold for me. Yeah. I was supposed to have it on the market for like 265 270 Well, we ended up firing multiple contractors and it drug out. And then when we finally yeah. did sell, it was like 300 and something, 315 yeah. or 320 mm -hmm. I was like, well, that was a win. <laughs> Yeah. But don't listen. Don't, don't go do out and plan that. Right? That <laughs> yeah. was a, a, a fluke that worked out. So. Yeah, and th and the same way with this. You just you know we we got dinged in like November. Well, November, December, January. Here's the downtime. Yeah. And the market's slow. We would have been on. Um, 
So yeah, I mean it's it's going to work out. But even now that the work is back on track, every you day mean I'm your walking. three are, are back humming now, right? They're humming now, yeah. finally. But it's that lag period that's just exhausting just and yeah. gut wrenching. Yeah, right? yeah. So. I'm like, do I got to go finish these myself? Right. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know. Well, that I was kind of, that one in um, California that, that I was telling you about. Like that was where I was like, well, do I go? Over? I didn't know how to. Yeah. Like I, I got to run electrical and pl- like what? I don't know. These <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing about this business is there's so many moving parts. And there's so many people involved and not to disparage contractors as a whole, but finding a good dependable contractor is like finding Bigfoot. They're out there. You've heard about them. Right. It's like never seen one. <laughs> right? um, I always say, look, it, you can find a good contractor, but the real question is, is there consistency? I because yeah. I like I find a lot that are good for one or two jobs, but then it's like they just fall off. It's like it's, they get complacent or something. They do, and that's what I mean by that consistency. It's hard to keep yeah. that consistent contractor that's constantly doing good. And then and then look, let's be honest, the really good ones that are very consistent have their crews are out there. Well, man, they're retail based. They're busy, yeah, and, and they're, they cost a lot more. They they realize like we're gonna go towards mom and our mom and dad owner of the house and the retail side, and so it's hard to bring them into our world because mm-hmm. our margins are so small. A lot yeah, of times. and that's one of the things with going back to the permits. You know, you you've got to have a, a licensed builder build pull the permit, but then you've got to have a plumbing permit, yep. an electrical permit, yep. and just because somebody's driving around in a pickup truck with electrical on the side does not mean they can pull permits. Oh, not at all. A lot, a lot of a lot of good old boys and girls yeah. out riding around. Yep. But because of that, you have to use. I don't want to say a higher level of trade, yep. but you gotta you gotta hire someone who number one has got they're established, they know what they're doing, they right. do it by the book, they do a good job, but they're going to charge you 30 percent more. And I agree with that because I've looked at all the jobs and let's say I'm running on a project and I'm looking at the cost and it's 30,000, mm-hmm. but I'm like, mm, you know what? I need to get a contractor in here to pull permits. I, I know it's going to cost me 20%. Yeah. So that 30, I got to run a budget of 36 to 37 because yeah. really what people don't understand when you're hiring a licensed builder or general contractor, that's pulling the umbrella permit so that their subs can pull their permits under Mm-hmm. You're paying them that 20% to manage those subs and yeah. that project. Yeah. Well, hopefully that 20% means you can rely on them more. True. True. They know it. There's not, because we do, a, we used to do a ton of rework. Yeah. You know, so in in my mind, I justify that 20% in saving time, saving me headaches, yep. making sure it's done right. And if it's done right, you can, you can usually maybe raise oh, your price a little bit yeah. more if the quality work is right. there. And look, let's just be honest. When you get to the point where you're doing multiple rehabs at one time, mm-hmm. it is by far in your best interest to get a licensed contractor yes. because they are managing jobs. You're not. Mm-hmm. And so if you're doing one at a time and you want to self-manage and do all that, that's fine. But when you've got two, three, four, five, you better get contractors. Yeah. At what point do you get your own crew? Um, that's a personal thing. Like at this point, I probably could have my own crew. Mm-hmm. And at one point in my career here in Huntsville, I did have my own mm-hmm. crew, but I just don't anymore. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just, it's, it's more headache for me to have to deal with. Um, uh, so I just like contractors that have their crews now. Yeah. Now yeah. don't get me wrong. I got my little handyman crews for my rental properties to get them mm-hmm. ready. But I mean, yeah, it's nothing. Well, I think one, one of the points you made was a lot of contractors start off great. Yeah. They'll, they'll have two or three jobs. They're like, man. And it's almost like the, the time when you come to rely on them is when they get complacent ah, and comfortable yeah. and start to take advantage. Yes, have yes, you had a contractor yes, yes. take advantage oh, there, yeah. Zach? Uh, listen, <laughs> look, I never, what, uh, Excalibur. Mm-hmm. Remember the one in South Huntsville? Oh, hell, I'm okay. still trying to sell that thing. So that one <laughs> was, and I don't know how long ago that was when I when you sold it was, that. It was a year, several years. Yeah, two or three yeah. years ago. Yep. That was the last time I got really burnt by a contractor. I gave a contractor eight jobs. Um, he'd been coming around. He'd, he had some good referrals. And I was like, all right, man, well, I'm overloaded. Here's eight jobs. And uh, he got me. He got me for like twenty something thousand dollars, not mm-hmm. on one, but spread out across all eight of them. Mm-hmm. Um, he did get me, and um, so even at my level, you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, sometimes you, you you take your eye off the prize, and um, and it, it, look, my mom said it best growing up. Oh, wise mom tells. <laughs> it's she amazing said, how much mom. Son, knew. you know why locks are on doors? 
She said to keep the honest people out. <laughs> Crook's a crook. Yeah. That's, they'll that's smile brilliant. in your yeah. face, and when you turn around, they'll steal from your back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so we do our best to keep things tight and ran correctly so we don't have it happen. But sometimes it does happen. Yeah. And um, it's far fewer now than it was when I first started. Yeah. It, it's going to happen to you. Period. Yep. yep. It is. So, all right. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. So let's, let's sum up your advice uh, as far as. Not uh, having you, a horror story. Not having a horror story like <laughs> Zach. You, you got two minutes. Go. <laughs> uh, well, one, I would say this. Don't come into this business thinking that it's all horror stories because right. it's really not. And I want to be very upfront about that. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of money to be made. But number two, the, you got to be just really do. You got to put the time into really building your team of solid people. Mm -hmm. And and if they're if you're new to a big like I never should have done that. I, it was a gut job. I never should have done that without help. And you were um, in over your head from day one. From day one. Yeah. From day one. So if you're starting in rehab, don't start with those types of projects. Like get to know your crew a little bit. Find stuff that just needs paint, carpet, updating, mm -hmm. and kind of get to know your crew a little bit. But I would always say slow down, get educated, get the specialized knowledge that you need. And if and if you're in a position where you think mentoring or coaching is the right fit, then get mm -hmm. that in yep. and going. And and as my mama used to say, don't let your what she used to, don't let your butt get too big for your britches. Oh, very That's so, a good one. Yeah, my my mom had a lot of those. Oh, my but too. With man. me, she was talking about my weight as a kid. Ah, so. ah but <laughs> all right, uh, Zach Childress. If uh, folks would like to get a hold of you, learn more. You are the president of the local RIA. What else can you can you tell them? Yeah, I've been the president of the RIA for going on 14 years now. Man, wow. we are an amazing community of like-minded real estate investors, lenders, um, uh, new seasoned vendors. We all come together um, uh, to help better our investor community. And so we'd love to have you be a part of that. You can find us at madisoncountyria.com. Or you can check us out at localinvestorclub.com. All right. And we always put links in the description. Uh, if you are uh, in need of a real estate company, we got Revolved Realty here. I always say the fastest growing little brokerage in town, almost 100 agents. 100 agents is right there. Is you just got to grab him and pull right him over. End, right? you know, just like, come here, come here, come I here. I love Come that. here, little boy. You know, so... Uh, but yeah, we work with a lot of folks who pick us up off the uh, channel here. A lot of investors. I've got I've got groups of investors booking me now. They come in on Friday afternoon for a little dog and pony show. So if you are in, uh, interested in investing here, or if you're looking to move here, or if you're already here and you would like our assistance, uh, you'll find us at Revolve.com. So, well, all right, buddy, we'll try to keep out of trouble. And, uh, you I don't know, know if no, that's possible. No, no horror stories between now and next Oh, week. that I'm very cautious <laughs> about. So. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.